morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Let's take the uh, this morning service to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and for this opportunity to be here at New Mercies and worship you. We just thank you for all the blessings that we receive and thank you so much for having uh, having our best interest at all times. We pray for pastors. He brings the word this morning. We just ask that that word would reach our hearts and would carry it with us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and help us make a joyful noise.
have another new song we're going to do for you. And uh, again, remember this one because you'll probably be singing it next week. Don't we have it on next week's list, I think? It's called, And All the People Said Amen. If you know it, feel free to sing along. Good to see everybody today. Uh, last week this side won, I think this week this side won. So <laughs> it, was, it was close, but uh, several announcements that we want to, want to make. Uh, I hope my voice last, last Sunday, we had the baptism out at the camp after church and by the time I came home, I had lost my voice and I thought, oh, I'll be better by next week. Well. Uh, I'm not sure I am, but I, I think we'll make it through, uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, so for our announcements today, we have several things uh, to mention. Uh, the ladies' Bible study, normally tomorrow, will not meet tomorrow. Uh, Linda has some other obligations that she has to do then. A transparent men is coming up this coming Saturday, uh, and we meet here at the church at uh, 8 o'clock. Any men or boys that want to go into that, uh, we'd be happy to have them meet here at 8 o'clock to go in for that. <clears throat> Next weekend is Labor Day weekend, and the weekend after Labor Day weekend is a very busy weekend for us because uh, Elizabeth Baptist Church is hosting the Amani Children's Choir from Uganda, Africa. Uh, we'll have a video for you next week to give you a little idea of what that's like, but it's an exceptional choir uh, and it uh, They do they too are su Supporting uh, the, the orphanage. They take care of thousands of children in Uganda We'll have more information about that next week the next Saturday the Saturday not next Saturday But this is the week after Labor Day is our hymn sing uh, where, where we come together and we sing hymns and uh, gospel music. Um, and then on Sunday, 
because of Labor Day and other scheduling conflicts, all three of these events have to be on the same weekend. So, but you won't have to come to all of them, but we encourage you to come to any you would like to. Children's Choir, Friday night, Saturday night, the hymn sing, and then Sunday afternoon at five o'clock, the TT Givers, the Buckner Band, uh, will be doing a youth program down uh, in the pavilion. We'll have uh, uh, food, and then they'll do a concert. Uh, they have kind of a ministry around the whole area, and so they're gonna use this concert as an opportunity for all the different groups they're a part of and ministries they are to come. So um, <clears throat> I realize that's a lot uh, for one weekend, but uh, because of scheduling things, that's really the only way that, <clears throat> that, that it could work. So for our uh, prayer request this morning, uh, Jeff Toll had back surgery. He went in the second, didn't get home from the hospital until just a couple days ago. Um, our phone has been out and I have to go up on the hill to make calls. Finally got a hold of them, their phone was out too. Um, he's had three surgeries uh, because of complications and infection and he's on a high dose of medicine that he's allergic to. So he had to go back into the emergency room uh, to be treated for that. Uh, not only that, their house was struck by lightning and they had some circuits that burned out. Uh, so they've just really been through a lot, so remember them. Uh, my brother uh, is dealing with cancer and will be getting test results back. Uh, Ray's wife, Patty, has knee problems, so uh, she'll be going in for that. <clears throat> Good to see Shirley. There she is. She always somewhere back there but uh, she had had a heart attack and stents and everything and maybe we'll have to have some more uh, issues with one blockage that she has left but good to see her back uh, evan lichty will get some results this week uh, he had surgery for bladder cancer uh, and is dealing with some other issues as well so remember him and good to see sandy uh, back without her brace or anything after her surgery so let's bow at this time for prayer Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the knowledge that you are with us through everything. We thank you for music and the opportunity that it gives us to express our desire to, to know you and to honor you. And we ask that in all things, uh, every word that we sing would be our praise to you. Bless us as a congregation as we strive to be who you call us to be and be with each of these that have been mentioned that are going through surgery and other treatments and facing other problems. Now, as we look to your word, we ask that you would guide us and bless us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. This being the last Sunday of the month, this is the Sunday that we remember Christ's sacrifice for us in communion. We view uh, two, um, <clears throat> two major issues that, uh, that we re use to remember ordinances uh, that we use to remember Christ's sacrifice. Je when Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, everything changed. Death was defeated, victory was won for us, and we have hope for everlasting life. And Jesus confirmed that he was the Son of God because he had power to raise from the dead. We represent this in the two ordinances of the church. One is baptism, where we are buried with Christ raised to walk in a newness of life. As we die to our sins, we die to self, and then give our life to God, and he raises us up as a new creation. The other is communion, where we pause and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. The night Jesus was arrested, the night before he went to the cross, he met with his disciples in the upper room and instituted what we refer to as the Lord's Supper. The way we do it here is, we start uh, from the back after uh, we have a prayer. Sherry will play as we, as we do this. We start from the back, come down the outside aisle, take the elements, go back the center aisle to your seats. And when everyone is served, then we will take the elements of communion together. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful so much for your love that you gave your life and that you overcame death for us, that we might know that you are God, 
and that the penalty for our sins might be paid. As we meditate and focus at this time, may we remember all that you have done for us. And in the light of your sacrifice for us, may we consider our response to what you have done for us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. <clears throat> Children are dismissed. You might want to go back. They got donuts today, I hear. We're in a series on the Sermon on the Mount, uh, which is really transformational when it comes to our understanding of God and the worship of God. Um, in the Old Testament, it's, it seems like every time God appears on the scene, there's thunder and lightning. You know, the earth opens up and swallows people. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of thou shalt not. And in the New Testament, we it's the same loving God, and he's trying still to, to get us to know and to do his will. And so we're thankful that uh, God is the same in the Old and the New Testament, but we're thankful that the difference is that Jesus came not to tell us what to do, but to show us what to do. And in the Sermon on the Mount, it's not a lot of thou shalt not, but it's a, a lot of do this to be happy. The, the Sermon on the Mount begins with the attitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, all the different things that God wants us to do uh, so that we can find the hope and joy that he has for each of us. And so we're thankful for that. Then it talks about that we are to be the light of the world. We are to be the salt of the earth. We're to be in the world to make a positive difference. And then he talked about the fact that you have heard that it was said, but I say, and it talked about murder, but don't even be angry. Let's, let's get to the core of our heart issues that, that we do and know the right thing. And then last week, we, we talked about the fact that don't do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them, because if you do, that's the reward that you're going to get. But we don't do good things so that people will applaud us we don't pray so people can say, wow, that was a great prayer. And we don't do anything that we do out of selfish motives or ambitions because we care more about others than we care about ourselves. And when we build ourselves up, then maybe we're putting other people down. We're making it harder for them. And what is, we are to do as Christians is to make it easier for everyone. That's kind of a brief summary of some of the things that we've looked at uh, recently. This morning, uh, last week we talked a little bit about prayer, that we don't do it to be seen by men. This week I want to look at what we call the Lord's Prayer. And uh, I think um, if 
hopefully all, most of you have a scripture sheet, <clears throat> but I'd like for us to recite together the Lord's Prayer. Um, and this, if you notice, this is not from the NIV, which is normally uh, the scriptures that we use, but this is from the King James Version, because the King James Version is how we remember the Lord's Prayer. Back when everybody started saying the Lord's Prayer, the King James Version was one of the only versions that there was. So uh, if you have your scripture sheet, or if you know it, um, and I got to thinking about this, uh, this is a model prayer that Jesus taught us. He didn't, he says, after this manner, pray. It's not necessarily something that we are to memorize and then recite over and over again. Although it's never wrong to say the Lord's Prayer but it's a model, and we will look in just a moment uh, at what the model teaches us about how we are to pray. So, our Father, join me and say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. As I was thinking about, uh, I always taught, well, you don't just say that, but maybe we need to say it more so the young people learn it. Because I, I, I'm not sure if we go over that and children are taught to say the Lord's Prayer. But this is a model that Jesus gave us. And so we look at this and we can see how to pray. Everything changes because of our relationship with Jesus. Uh, the, the second scripture on our sheet is from Luke 11. And it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And then he offered another model prayer, which is very similar uh, to the one that we just did. So it's not necessarily a pray we, prayer we pray word for word, but it's a prayer that covers certain things. The first part of the Lord's Prayer is very obvious. Our Father, who art in heaven. And to me, this says a whole lot. Now, we can just say that uh, whenever we repeat something from somebody else or read something it's you know you can say it but what does our father who art in heaven mean it changed the way they addressed god because in the old testament they it wasn't so much of that we have a heavenly father that that loves us and cares for us and we're in a relationship in with him and we have communion in the old testament god is pretty much uh, feared uh, back in exodus um, 20, this was, we looked at this a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at uh, some of the Ten Commandments. It says, when the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourselves and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of the Lord will keep you from sinning. We need to have a reverent fear of who God is because of his awesome power and who he is. That's the second part of this, our Father. Though, but this is a relationship that we have with God where he's our Father. If you were fortunate enough to have a loving Father in your home, you could go to that Father. You needed something, you got hurt, you needed something. You know, whether it's a father or a mother in the family, you go to them because they're the people that care for you. They're the ones that uh, are there when you need them. And so that's who God is. In the Old Testament, they were afraid of God. They didn't want to even have God speak to them, let alone them speak to him. And so they were saying to Moses, well, you intercede for us. But Jesus came to show us that Jesus, that God is our Heavenly Father. When he taught us to pray, he didn't pray eternal creator of the universe who has all power and everything. He didn't teach us to pray, 
O judge of everything, because that wouldn't be a, a very comforting thought. <clears throat> but when we're taught to pray our Father, it's we're going to someone that loves and cares for us. And so we can go and then offer our hurts. We can, uh, the, we'll look at the different things that we do. We can go because he is there to help us. Our Father who art in heaven. Uh, so we're, we're talking about a heavenly Father, but we're also talking about the awesomeness of God. You know, the Bible says, that, uh, and we have a scripture, Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. We look at the world we're a part of, and we realize that this is a pretty wonderful place. Look what God did. This is who God is for us. You know, uh, <clears throat> science doesn't change, but our understanding has improved. Uh, in the old days, uh, people looked at the heavens, you know, you say, our Father who art in heaven, they might think, you know, angels used to, were pictured sitting on the clouds, remember? They didn't understand the vastness of the creation and all that, that God was able to do. We didn't understand thunder. We didn't understand lightning. What causes it? We know it's electrical discharge now, and we know that, that thunder is caused by the warm air, meeting the cold air, and all these different things that we can understand now. But even though some things we understand now, we are still amazed because every time we find something new in science, it's, it just amplifies the power and the goodness of God and who he is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, there was nothing except there was God. So God is outside the created universe. So when we say, our Father who art in heaven, it's heaven is beyond the created world. So that's who God is. And so when we pray and understand the power and the awesomeness of God, We get to say, that's my dad. You know, he created everything. The, the next part, our Father who art in it, hallowed be thy name. Um, the, there's a song we sing once in a while, he is God in heaven and here am I on earth. So let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Uh, he's God in heaven, that's who he is. And here we are, but hallowed be his name. His name is holy. We, we, we reverence him. We stand in awe of him because of who he is. In Isaiah, the sixth chapter, um, says, you're the king, Uzziah died. I saw the Lord, he had a vision in heaven, high and exalted, seated on the road, and the, the train of his robe filled the temple. There, the, the seraphs were flying around and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallowed be thy name. He is holy, he is powerful, he is loving, he is good, he is pure. And all of these things uh, are, are who he is. In Revelation, and we sang Revelation song this morning, and he had a view in heaven. Uh, John did and says he looked and I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. With a loud voice they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Again, the foundation of our faith is a death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, the lamb of God, to receive power, wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. And to him who sits on the throne be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. That's the God that we address. And we get to call him our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray to God, 
Our desire, we, we are coming because of our desires. We are coming in part because of our needs. We have addressed who God is, and now we're concerned about <clears throat> expressing, you know, our needs. But the greatest need we have is to know the will of God and to be a part of the kingdom of God. Because when we know the will of God, we know what we're supposed to do to find the ultimate happiness. When we make Jesus king in our life, we are giving him authority to help us in every need uh, that we have because he is God and he knows best. I believe that everything God made is good. I believe everything God made is good. So we want his kingdom to come. When we look at creation, uh, we look at uh, his power. Uh, there's a hymn, I'm not gonna, don't have time to read much of it, but for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the Lord which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all to thee we praise, Lord of all to thee we raise, our hymn of grateful praise. I'm not, not sure I got that quite right, but <clears throat> I'd have to go back and sing the whole thing. So <clears throat> he created it, and everything he made is good. Everything he asks us to do is good. Did, does Jesus ask us to do anything that isn't really the good thing for us? It, it you know, puts out the selfish desires that we have where we're trying to imp uh, uh, show that we're better than others, something like that. But everything that, that we learn, the family, the birth of a child, all the things that God has done to show us so many things. You know, the birth of a child is important because we are God's children. And when you have a child, and you know, people with, that have had children recently have explained these things to me, that their life was changed when they looked at that child that was now their responsibility. They loved them, they, it cha that child changed their life. That's how God looks at us. And if we don't have a child, we can't maybe fully understand the depth of God's love for us that he teaches us in the, in the, the things, the things of life. It's how God sees us. Maybe at times our children break our hearts. At times we break God's heart. At times our children bring us great joy. And at times we bring God great joy because of that. <clears throat> the next phrase is give us this day our daily bread. A first thought that comes to my mind when I think of daily bread, I think of manna in the Old Testament. You know, during the 40 years that the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness after they came out of Egypt, but before they could go into the promised land, they're wandering around in the desert. And so God provided manna for them. And if you remember about manna, they got manna every day. They had to go out, it would come overnight, it would go out and they'd have to gather it in the morning. But they couldn't say, well, tomorrow I'm gonna to be lazy, I'm gonna sleep in, I'll get extra so I won't have to go out and gather it tomorrow. What happened to that? Well, it would rot, except on uh, the day before the Sabbath, they could get two days because they didn't, weren't to work on the Sabbath. So it, God provided daily bread for them. So give us this day our daily bread, I think is God providing not only our spiritual needs, but our physical needs as well. God cares for us and provides those things for us. Uh, a part of this, I think, is God provides a way for us to make a living. Uh, if you have children, uh, we, I have two children. Uh, one, when he was little, he played bank. I, my mother had a Band-Aid can, the old metal Band-Aid cans that were real cans, and he'd get all her change out and line it all up, and he'd play bank. And uh, my daughter, uh, she played army <laughs> as a kid. That didn't make us maybe as happy as it could have. Uh, and she played the trumpet a lot too. But uh, they both went on. My son became a banker. My daughter uh, eventually uh, was in the military for a while as a medic and now she's a nurse. So they're all different. 
They all have different desires, but every child has something that they like to do, and if they can find what they like to do and make a living at it, you know, that, that, that's a good thing. But, you know, he, he makes that possible for us. When you think of the creation, when he created the plants, what did he say? Every seed-bearing plant. What does that mean? It means every plant that God made had seeds in it that would reproduce that plant. So if you have seeds and they're going to produce fruit, what do you need? You need bees or you need butterflies, you need pollinators. So God made everything so that we could raise a garden. He created the plants. And when you think of the complexity, if there weren't bees or something to pollinate, there would be no fruit. So the complexity of God's design is, is, is marvelous. It's beyond <clears throat> our understanding. And so we have birds that they'll take seeds from one place to another. I brought some, uh, what I, we call flocks home, it blooms in the spring, you know, grows along the road, you see wildflowers. Well, the birds have taken those seeds and planted them all over our yard. God's, to give us our daily bread, God makes it possible for there to be farmers and farm crops and understand those things. And uh, some people, they're welders and plumbers and carpenters and HVAC people, all people that have an interest in a different area. And it's getting to be where it's hard to find somebody to fix your air conditioner because people aren't going into those fields. But God makes it everything possible to give us our daily bread. And uh, one of my favorite scriptures is, is Proverbs 6. Go to the ant, you sluggard. <laughs> Had to go back to the King James for this as well. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commanders, no overseer or rulers, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its fruit in the harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands and rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So, you know, we're to be productive. God has, has put these things in the world. He has given us talents, abilities, interests, and we can find something that we enjoy, that we can use in a productive way, as long as we don't just sit around like an old slug. So don't be a, a sluggard. <clears throat> forgive us our, tr our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know, when we come to the Lord in prayer, we have, we have addressed who God is. We have asked for the daily needs that we have. Not, not exorbitant luxuries, you know, we don't need a, a 60 foot yacht or something like that, but God will provide our daily needs as he gives us opportunity uh, to make a living and do the things that we need to do. But our greatest need as we come to God is forgiveness because we're all sinners. We all fall short of who God wants us to be. And we're thankful that he forgives us. And so we come to him and we ask for forgiveness for our debts or trespasses, uh, different uh, times we use the, the different words in, in the model prayer. But it's what we need, it's what we all need. We know the value of forgiveness. What would our relationship to God, to God be if he did not forgive us of our sins? So we're thankful that he does. What makes possible the forgiveness of our sins is going to the cross and dying for us, makes it possible for him to say, your debt is paid and I forgive you. If we understand that, we are so thankful because our relationship with God depends on his forgiving us of our sins. We don't have to forgive him because he doesn't sin. So, but it's, in that way, it's a one-sided event. But there are other relationships that we're involved in where both parties sin. And that is every relationship we have with any person that's around us. Because no matter what that relationship is, we are both sinners. Therefore, because Jesus took the first step and forgave us, 
We need to take the first step and forgive others when they sin against us. We don't have to wait till they're sorry. Oh, they, they, when they could get around to it the, and they apologize, then I'll forgive them. Jesus didn't wait for us and we can't wait for others. And so when there's sin, we need to go and offer that forgiveness because the success of the relationship is only possible as we forgive each other. That's why we turn the other cheek. That's why we go the second mile. That's why we love our enemies, because Jesus took the first step for us, and we need to take the first step for others. That they can know the love of God, because we love God, or God loves them through us, and we're able to do that. Maybe those sins were intentional. Maybe they were unintentional. Maybe they didn't mean a thing. Maybe we read something into it, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes we just mess up. And the first thing we need to say is, Father, forgive me as I have forgiven others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We do what we think makes us happy. So the question is, what do we think will make us happy? Goes back again to thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Do we believe that God's way is the best way? Um, James 1 says, when we are tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. We have desires that are sinful. They'll drag us into that thing and say, you know, Satan says, well, this is gonna make you happy. And we believe him. And then we sin. Then after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So that's where temptation comes. When we think what will make us happy is sinful, and we, and we don't understand and recognize that, that's how he does. So God leads, keeps us from temptation by telling us the truth about what will make you happy and what will lead you down that wrong path. That's why everything that he, he understands uh, gives us to, so we have that understanding. In Psalm 37, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. If your focus is on, boy, I'm thankful God is my heavenly father. He's in heaven. He's God of all creation. He's, his name is holy. His name is to be honored and reverence. And I know he loves me and cares for me. Then he will give us the desires of our heart as, as we go, go forward for that. So that's what it is. We come to God, we acknowledge that he's the all-powerful creator of the universe, but we get to say, that's my dad. He cares for me, he loves me. He's all of that, but he loves me and I'm his child. His name is holy, we reverence him, we seek his kingdom, we honor him uh, in every way. He gives us our daily needs, or whatever those might be, and he makes possible for us an understanding of all of these things. Just one closing thought. If you forgive men their trespasses, this is after, you know, he's already said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Just in case you missed it, you know, he goes back and he says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you also. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will you find, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So there's a little condition here. You know, God's grace applies to all of us. But if we aren't gracious, can God be gracious to us? If we aren't forgiving, can God be forgiving to us? I don't think this means that if you don't forgive somebody, you're not gonna make it to heaven. But I think it means we better take it seriously because Jesus says it in pretty harsh, strong language. Because it matters. Forgiveness 
keeps us one together. And if we don't forgive each other, you know, there's not a person here today that can't find fault with me. I'm sure of that. There's something I've done or something I've said that you say, oh, that's, that's not right. And if you won't forgive me, then what can our relationship be? And so, this works, you know, both ways. And every, everyone here, every, you know, it's, it's, it's true of all of us. But Jesus loved me and died for me when I was still a sinner. And I thank God for it. And that's my motivation to do the right thing in forgiving others, serving others, honoring others, even above ourselves. So what a wonderful prayer that God gives us, not necessarily to recite over and over again, but to use as a model. Address him, acknowledge who he is, be thankful that he's our father, and then present our requests to him. Let's close in prayer. Father, we're so thankful that, that you loved us and that when your disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, there was something different about the way he talked to his father than the way that they had been taught to pray. And so you've taught us to pray, Father. And I pray that we would come to you acknowledging who you are and requesting those things that we need and in everything, giving thanks to you for we know that you answer and hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Your pastor's going to look at me in a minute here because I'm going to say something about him. Um, <laughs> you know, pastor, he, uh, he preaches and does what he preaches. He does what he says. He and I have opportunities to chat once in a while, and we don't always agree. And uh, sometimes that can go into interesting conversations, but I'll be the first one to say that I always appreciate uh, how we come back together and how we find those places where we can agree on things. And I think one thing um, that recently came up and I, I think is really important to bring up here is uh, we all agree that this is an amazing team that we have behind us. And, uh, this week we did three new songs that we've done over the last uh, couple of three weeks. And in order to do that, it's a lot of practice. No one here is paid. We're all volunteers. No one wants to get paid. You're not looking at America. <laughs> no, no one is asking to be paid because we volunteer our time. And that takes a lot of time, especially these folks that are really good on their instruments. Uh, I'm just a filler. I just hit a couple of notes, but the rest of the people, Sherry calls me a filler instrument. That's why I'm there. <laughs> Uh, but these folks back here have to really work on it. And, and so I just really want to thank Susan, Brad, Michael, Willie, Roy, and Sherry for all the effort they put in to bring the music to you every week like it is. I'm just so proud to be a part of this team, and I'm proud of uh, their efforts. It's never easy, and we don't get through this always an easy way, but it always works out because Christ is with us. So please stand and help us sing.